Hi, Paul Hefty here, We're going to talk about motivation in sport. We'll start out looking at some keys to motivation, specifically talk about flow, what it is, how it works, and then uh, successful motivation. Let's take a look. All right, some keys there to how people are motivated. Um, real simple here, research shows people just want some basic needs fulfilled. So the two that come out, which is interesting, is number one is just to have fun. And then number two, uh, a feeling of self-worth or having a role. So when you start to look at motivation as a leader, you want to think about rewards. You can design or goals um, and steps on how to achieve those goals as a way to motivate people. So the key to have the ability to motivate is first note is to know what phase your athletes are in their readiness phase again it goes back to forming storming norming and performing if we know what phase they're in then we can do a better job of being that situational coach and providing not only the the coaching style but the type of motivation that's needed at the time some other questions to think about why are some athletes so motivated and others not as motivated and then how can we motivate athletes to be the best they can be. Again, the argument would be is looking at ways to focus on self-improvement, having fun, and then creating roles for people. Maybe one of the things we should look at is finding some balance in what we do um, and having some consistency. When we talk about flow, we're talking about just having that, again, balance, just like we talked about. Um, for the experience in their emotional state and their readiness state. So again, flow is what happens when everything's going just right because you're neither bored, you're not too low, and you're not too anxious or too high either. So what we need to try to do as leaders is manipulate the activities um, intensity to match where that athlete is ready at that time. And then the flow experience once a person uh, gets a chance to have that, it's so intrinsically rewarding that um, usually athletes are motivated to get back into that state of flow. A visual here, real simple, is you can see performance is going to be at its peak when we're at that medium uh, balance phase, not too high, not too low. So how do you coach it or how do you create it for your athletes? gets back to some legal issues we talked about is matching the challenge of the task to the ability of the athletes. So what we need to do there is again, know where athletes are in their readiness, also know where they are in their abilities, and then match those challenges. A lot of examples would be matching um, good versus good versus having these in team aspects, ones versus twos and so forth. Another thing is to just think of uh, remember what it was like when we were kids on a playground, how we learned it was that fun, open environment um, and excitement of it. And make sure we create those in that game's approach of practice and teaching. So a couple teaching mechanics, keep the practice stimulating, real simple, like we said, uh, using new games, new drills, but kind of that game's approach where we're doing many games within uh, a structured situation shaping the play for example let your athletes be part of the design process sometimes we can ask them um, what would make this this teaching or drill or activity better more fun but also uh, better for them in their learning keep everyone active that's the key the biggest thing i see when i'm consulting is you have coaches doing a lot of talking what athletes need is they need repetitions and they need to stay active again going back to that uh, idea of creating that playground environment. Avoid constant instruction. Um, you want your instruction to be impactful and not uh, end up being just static noise all the time so that they do understand uh, the key points using cue words, cue terms, and they can get right to it and you keep the repetitions rolling because that's the key. And then don't constantly evaluate, especially during a contest that really breaks flow. Sometimes actually in practice too, is we just need to let the athletes work through it. All right, so 
let's do a motivation workshop. Yeah. If we were in a class structure or live class structure, we'd do this in small groups or teams, but online then, if you're doing it, um, obviously just write down some notes. What you want to do is I'm going to show in the next slide the template for the rewards. And you want to go through, you can see at the top, it's going to be separated into pre-season, in-season, and post-season. Again, there should be different needs for the different readiness at that point with each of the areas. Be creative, pull from, from past experiences, likes and also dislikes, but also look at some of the new ideas that we've talked about and uh, be creative in using new research. Remember, the two keys to motivation, again, are creating a fun environment and one of self-worth where everyone has a role. So here's the template. Again, when you use templates with the course, you're going to first need to do a T and an R. Write your thesis statement. What is your reward system? Give an overview of it in your own words. And then with each, the preseason, in-season, and postseason, you need to do a thesis and then a reference set of reference of what are the differences in the way you'll lead during those, those uh, three different parts of the year. So first start out with a T and an R for all three seasons. And then the illustration is the template itself, which will serve for all of them. So you can see uh, for the workshop here, start with the illustration of motivation start. Again, kind of talk about the readiness phases that you think your team would be in. Next one then on the left is keys to motivation. How are you going to create fun and a sense of worth? Then we go physical rewards, psychological, social rewards. Talk about fear of failure. How are you going to avoid that or that anxiety? So then we can obviously find that balance and that peak performance for flow. Last, then look at extrinsic, uh, external, intrinsic, internal uh, rewards. And then what are the objectives of your reward system at the end? Again, for each of the different seasons. So pause and go ahead and fill out the template. And then you can go back doing a T and an R for each of the seasons with your reward system. Just review a little bit though, some factors at play in your reward system. Again, the need to feel worthy. Um, as it says here, we, we learn this really young, at a young age, um, that our worth depends largely on the ability to achieve and have some success, whatever that is. So when the relation to sports, a lot of times that ends up just being winning or being very talented or successful in your performance. What we need to look at is the way to motivate these athletes, base it again on creating a fun environment, but looking at individual improvement. And we'll show why, because some people are motivated because they're achieving success and others are motivated just to avoid that failure. So one of the things that uh, research shows is successful individuals have a certain mindset. Um, so successful um, individuals and the way they stay highly motivated is if they have some failure, they blame it on just their effort. They don't blame it on um, other people, other situations, or just their talent. So they're going to go ahead and continue to strive for excellence and they kind of enjoy that competition and enjoy that struggle and, and like to find ways to improve. People that are unsuccessful thinkers um, that are gonna come up with a lot of different excuses and look at different ways to blame their failures and that way they don't have to take credit for, the, for um, being unsuccessful. They feel kind of powerless in the change. So how do you create successful thinking? As I said before, it can't be all performance-based. We've gotta make sure that we also match the challenge of the task to the ability of the athlete. So create opportunities for people to have success. Um, and everyone in the program, not just your talented ones that are gonna be um, playing significant roles on game day. Again, set realistic goals. You wanna use these e extrinsic and intrinsic rewards for motivation. Good example is as a football coach, I uh, went into a program where we used the helmet type stickers and um, until I had used them, I thought it was really uh, a silly thing. And then once I started using them, we saw how you could use the awards reward system based not just on performance, but on effort, on academic achievement, on leadership, different things, so that everybody in the program was getting recognized 
again, based on effort uh, on and off the field. So again, success then is about really improvement, individual improvement and, and group improvement. Again, when we're talking about flow, each sport is uniquely different in order to achieve that balance. So a good example is um, sports with large mus muscle movements can be done at a higher arousal level. So football, again, offense and defensive linemen can be at a higher level and still perform because they're asked to do um, large muscle movements. Uh, the example extreme on the other end would be a golfer trying to putt, obviously, the arousal level needs to be as low as possible because we're doing very um, uh, simple but very delicate movements there. So to wrap up, a couple review points. Make sure uh, you understand the different arousal levels that are needed for your specific sport and also the readiness of your players and your teams and then the individual abilities so that you can match that um, to create opportunities for improvement. When you're working on your template, again, you need to do a T, a thesis statement, and then support that with a reference for each of the three seasons. Talk about the uniqueness and the differences in the three. And then the template itself serves as the illustration for all three. It's great to work in reverse, do the illustration as we did in the workshop, and then start to design um, the thesis statement, your position, and support with citing of references to your reward system. Thanks.